Mm. Right. They may well have chestnuts and jerapiga because we are going to be talking about San Martino with the Magusto time of year. Look at this very. Oh, yes. Let me just give you full screen. There you go. Jerapiga yeah. And, uh, castanhas, castanhas, castanhas e jerapiga. Jerupiga de Penela, in this case, it's Jerupiga from Encosta yes. da Criveira. Um, oh, excellent. Yes, I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What an amazing yeah. place. Yes. Jerupiga from Encosta da Criveira. But, um, of course, the, the, on the 11th, uh, on Monday, is St. Martin's Day, Dia de São Martinho. Yeah. Um, and so the tradition in Portugal is uh, eating roasted chestnuts. These, these are not roasted yet. But, by the way, um, I would like to to tell you how to roast yeah. the chestnuts because when you yes. buy a chestnut, Rest to safety. <laughs> <laughs> when you buy a chestnut, you have to give a little bit of a cut here, yes. right? So oh, you you've cut, cut them the already. Very thoughtful. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, so you 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 cut them, and then you can put them in a tray, something to go to the oven. And put some salt, just a, a little bit of salt, salt on salt. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, you can yeah. put some salt on them, uh, and then put them for a few minutes in the oven. Um, when you take them out of the oven, you better put them uh, if you have some clay like this, <laughs> yes. or at least uh, put them in in a, a pot that, but with um, some fabric, some cloth that you have. You uh, cover them and let them uh, rest for a few minutes like that. So mm -hmm. you cover the chestnuts with a piece of cloth, cover them and let them, um, you know, be uh, rested for a few minutes. And then uh, it's easier to peel. It's easier ah, to peel. Okay, well, that takes okay? some of the moisture out, makes them a bit more brittle, presumably. Yeah, to it's, it's easier to peel. And, of course... You should drink some jerupiga. Well, of course you should. Of course you should. And yes. I, I do. I have a very kind supplier. I, I think it's the little. I'll come back to this, but there is a company that mm -hmm. you might want to buy your or support a local Portuguese business, a local as in a national one. <coughs> and I, I've been talking to them. Um, yeah, online. this is this is local from me, right? So, so this well, it is, is absolutely, Penella. isn't it? Penella, yeah. yes. Yeah. What, so could you tell us a bit more about Jerapiga? It's made from the skins, isn't it? Is it like an early an early pro a product from the wine harvest? Yes, because it's the leftovers of the the, the, the grapes, right? Yep. The, no waste. Uh, how do you call it? Uh, must? I don't know. Oh, the must. And, yes, it yes. is the must. Yes. And, yes. and uh, so you, you, you use that and then you add... Uh, a few more ingredients, uh, ingredients like uh, uh, aguardente and uh, um, you know I, I, I sugar, I guess I don't know. But uh, yes, you it's um, it's what you do with the leftovers, let's say, of of the grapes. Yeah. Mm, mm. Uh, and are you, this is something you will observe yourself, is it at this time of the year? And and, and the people of the town, perhaps, it's a public thing as well as much as it is a, a domestic thing, right? Yes, yes. Uh, um, we have magusto, as you said. Yeah. Yes. Uh, magusto is always a, a huge bonfire, um, so outdoors. And people, um, there are lots of, I'm sure that this weekend, lots and lots of villages and towns and even cities maybe, I don't know. But um, in villages and towns, at least you can find uh, huge bonfires and it's not to celebrate Guy Fawkes. <laughs> no. It's, it's, it's not one fire night, no. But but it's because of São Martinho. So um, people uh, gather in the main square usually or, you know, a, a public place that is usually meet-up meet point. And um, <clears throat> so they, they roast the chestnuts um, on the ground, so on, on, on in the bonfire. And of course, they drink uh, beer and wine and jerupiga. <laughs> so we have fun and socialize. That, that's what we do uh, the most, <laughs> socialize. Any excuse, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, this, this is the company that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention this morning. This is the Little Cellar Wine Company. They don't have a retail yet, but I believe it's uh, online and mail order. So I'll put the link to that. And they've got a little bit more to say 
um, about this particular festival. And that's a lovely um, illustration there, isn't it? Mm -hmm, of the it scene, is. the harvest. They're calling it a harvest celebration in Portugal traditions, mm -hmm. food and gelapiga. I'm not sure. Is that a, like a traditional and well-known artist? It could even be AI that, couldn't it? It's got a little bit of an AI vibe could about be. it. I mean, the grapes, the grapes are so lined up that I don't yes, know. They, are, <laughs> <laughs> they, they should be picked by now. So I think it is an idealistic scene, isn't it? Rather than yeah. a, 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 a fact-checked one. Um, autumn in Portugal feels like magic, magic, magusto. The vineyards turn shades of gold and red, and the air carries a hint of something special, something that promises warmth and joy for wine lovers and locals alike. This time of year signals the start of the grape harvest. It's, it's already been going on, isn't it? It's more than a farming ritual. It's a celebration of culture, community, and tradition that's woven into the fabric of Portuguese life. And at the heart of it all, you'll often find a glass of gerapiga. In the rolling hills of the Douro, Alentejo and beyond, friends and families gather to celebrate the year's bounty. So there you go. Yeah. Very important, uh, the great harvest, the Vindima, and, and to celebrate. I, I guess it's a, it, it's, a, it's a time to give thanks, isn't it? Uh, should there have been a, a, a bountiful harvest? And pray, if there hasn't been, uh, for, for better times next year. And, you know, I guess as we've become more industrialised and moved away from the countryside, it's really important that we keep that connection to what used to be in this way, I think, and to nature. And how, how dependent we still are, even if we don't think we are. Um, oh, yes. On, on the, of on the of course, we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yep, olive trees with grapes on, nearly as important. <laughs> as oh, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> An idealised uh, portrait of Portuguese life <laughs> Also, uh, excellent cover coverage, by the way, from Portugal Decoded, uh, if I might share that. We've got some questions coming in for you, Philomena, of course. Good, good. James, top student James, uh, often has a question for you of a, a, a vocabulary or grammatical kind. Um, the, uh, the the Friday briefing um, is asking the question ready for Magusto there. This, it's really good, the um, Portugal Decoded. And thank you, Catherine, for bringing it to my attention this morning. Uh, Can't see Bush. Can't see Hot and good, right? That's it. That's it. And they look really well done, don't they? They look like you could just look yeah. at them and they fall mine, apart. Mine are not hot yet, but they will. <laughs> they will. How long are you cooking yours for? Because a long, slow cook is better, isn't it, than a, than a quick roast, I think? Uh, yeah, it's not for long. It's uh, maybe what? Hmm. I don't know. I just look at them, but maybe 15 minutes or so. Is that right? Okay. You, so you do kind of flash roast them in your house. All right. Um, and yeah, of course, it's, it's the time of year where there'll be vendors on the street selling these. It's yeah. A very yeah. I, I had one the day before yesterday um, passing my door here. Um, yeah. And he, he, wow. he comes now, he comes every Wednesday. Wednesday yes. afternoon, he passes my door every Wednesday. And the 12 chestnuts cost two euros. And they are already roasted and everything, and Kansas boys. <laughs> well, so, that can't be bad, can it? That can't be bad at all. Very nice to celebrate this yeah. time. And he told me if if any of them is not good, just let me know because I'll be in the square. Let me know. <laughs> and you can exchange any bad ones. <laughs> That's great, yeah. isn't it? He's probably frightened of having them thrown yes, in. He's a very very nice man, a very nice uh, old old chap. Yes, fantastic. Okay, and that's what he did. I mean. There we go. There's a similar fella there. With, yes, with, there. With that's the right. And mm -hmm. uh, this is such a good resource. So I'll put the link to that and you can subscribe yourself to Portugal Decoded and maybe even buy the author there um, a bag of uh, chestnuts for his trouble. But look, yeah, St. Martin's festivity. That's a great big pan, isn't it, there? Mm. And is that perhaps the fire that you might be jumping over later or throwing your <laughs> ill wishes? After drinking, after drinking so many glasses yeah, of your pica, could be, be dangerous. Careful. Yes, it could, couldn't it? But that's that's such a good resource, Portugal Decoded. That's going into the chat as well there. Oh, we, I forgot to play the little video. We have a, we have our own video, don't we, uh, that uh, you sent to me as well. Yes. And then we'll get to the first of the questions soon after. This is what we, we're all about uh, here this morning. Let me just press play on the vid. No, dear de San Martino, via Dega e Provo Vigno. It's the time of San Martino. And to get trying the wine, right? Get to the cellar and try the wine. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, uh, my friend Annie, Annie Hamilton Gibney, and um, we recorded this video here in the square last year. Um, and this is the Portuguese saying, uh, 
no dia de São Martinho, vai à adega e prova o vinho. So, on St. Martin's Day, go to the winery and taste the wine. Very good. One more time then. Uh, no dia de São Martinho, vai à adega e prova o vinho. And am I right in thinking that's the sort of confidence people get by learning with you? I mean, she's loving it, loving it, isn't she? Yes, yes. And and she speaks Portuguese uh, quite well now, yeah. Very good, very good. Okay, so any questions you've got about uh, Magusto, about this time, this San Martinho time of year? Where, of course, the And same... the legend, the legend of San Martinho. I can read it for you oh, in please. Portuguese. Yes, I'd love, I'd love, and, yes, yes. and it's a Portuguese lesson. Yes, because <laughs> it, is a, it is a really good... Um, parable isn't it the, the whole point of san martino let's not forget that and the charity mm. of saint yes. martin so please yes do go ahead okay so lenda de são martinho segundo reza a lenda num dia frio e tempestuoso de outono um soldado romano de nome martinho percorria o seu caminho montado a cavalo quando deparou com um mendigo cheio de fome e frio. O soldado, conhecido pela sua generosidade, tirou a capa que a envergava e com a espada cortou-a ao meio, cobrindo o mendigo com uma das partes. Mais adiante, encontrou outro pobre homem cheio de frio e ofereceu-lhe a outra metade. Sem capa, Martinho continuou a sua viagem ao frio e ao vento, quando de repente e como por milagre, o céu se abriu, afastando a tempestade. Os raios de sol começaram a aquecer a terra e o bom tempo prolongou-se por cerca de três dias. Desde essa altura, todos os anos, por volta do dia 11 de novembro, surgem esses dias de calor a que se passou a chamar Verão de São Martinho. Wonderful, yes, and the weather connection there, of course. There's a lot in there, isn't there? There's a lot in there. So, um, yes. would, would you care to give us a translation and we can pick up <laughs> on some of the themes there? Okay, thank you, thank you. So, It's really lovely to hear you read in Portuguese. So, legend of Saint Martin, according to the legend, on a cold and stormy autumn day, a Roman soldier called Martin was riding his horse when he came across a beggar who was hungry and cold. Mm. So, soldier, fome, fome e frio, right? With fome we got in there. Yes, com, yes, yes. Cheio de fome. We say cheio de fome. Full of full hunger. Fome. Full of hunger. <laughs> cheio de fome. Great cheio phrase. de fome yes. e frio. So, quite hungry. Cheio de fome e frio. So, who was hungry and cold. The soldier, known for his generosity, took off the cloak he was wearing and with, with his sword cut it in half covering the beggar with one part. Further on, he found another poor man who was freezing to death and offered him the other half. Without a cloak, Martin continued his journey in the cold and wind when suddenly, and as, as if by miracle, the sky opened up, driving away the storm. The sun's rays began to warm the earth and the good weather lasted for about three days. Since then, every year, around November the 11th, those days of warmth appear, which came to be called St. Martin's Summer, Verão de São Martinho. So true. It's actually, it actually happened. I met with um, Sarah Davy of Spartan FX for lunch yesterday, and it was the most beautiful day on, um, on the beach uh, here at San Martinho. It, you know, San Martinho de Porto, the, the, the town yeah, of the San Martinho. And it, it's actually happening uh, this year, which is lovely that we have got this late San Martinio summer. Um, mm -hmm. So, and and it's it's really lovely when that happens, isn't it? That you know, it's the the, the story comes alive um, in the in the in the in the remembrance and the actual the climate reflected in the climate there. 